And now, time for something completely different. Yeah, I did this over the weekend with the kids and uh, I had a lot of fun with it and I videotaped it. So I thought I'd show you. So since we wasted enough time on this now, let's jump straight into the terminal since we got all of that out in the first episode. All right, I know I said that we were jumping right into the terminal, but we're not. This is the second part in a two part series on etcd for Kubernetes. If you didn't watch the first one, go back links up above, go back and watch it and then come back and watch this one. I want to start this off by saying that there was someone, maybe me, maybe someone else who deleted the footage of me doing the first etcd nodes. So you already have three, but we're going to make a fourth one. And I'll show you all the steps, but you shouldn't run four etcds, period. As you can see, I already have etcd set up in my DNS. And we're good to go. Now, uh, there are only a couple files that you need. So the first thing that you need is you're going to need to go and get etcd itself. Um, I've already done this. We can go ahead and list the files here. This is the etcd. We needed version uh, 3.4.0 for Kubernetes 15, 1.15. Uh, I will post a link of this in the description of the video where you can download this, the wget command. And then I untarred it and I moved it to user local bin. So you can do... And you can see that there's etcd there as well as etc control. So that is that. Uh, so we have etcd installed. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need to do is configure our etcd server. So if you go back to here, you can see that I have copied a couple files over here. We have the Kubernetes. Now, again, this is etcd for Kubernetes. Um, so we have our communication files here. This is our, our onion, our layers of security, um, that our etcd is going to use to communicate with. Uh, so we need to make a, so we need to make a, a couple folders here. So these are the folders we're going to make. Uh, we need the etsy etcd and the var lib etcd folders. So we're going to make both of those and then we're going to take these certs and everything here and we're going to drop them in the etsy etcd folder so we're going to go ahead and drop those files there so now we can ls the etsy and we have our files there all right so the next thing that we need to do is we need to configure our etcd service this is a super simple i have created a file um i will post this file um in the links description it is also on kubernetes the hard way by kelsey hightower so if you're following that it's very easy to update it from what he has done the only thing that's different is he lists an internal ip address that he gets from gcp which we we don't do because we have um we're running all on KVM. Let's look at that. This file here. So there's not a whole lot going on here, but there are a couple important things. The first thing is its name. This needs to match what the other um, etcd members are going to expect. There are these key files. So these are the ones that we moved in. So you have your, your cert file your key file, your peer cert file, your peer key file, and the trusted CA. So, um, oh, and the peer trusted CA. So 
you can see those are all filled out. We have those files copied there. These could actually be different than these. Um, these are all just telling us that we want our peer client cert auth as well as our client cert auth. Here are initial advertised peer URLs. These are the URLs that this is going to advertise itself on. So you can see that these are just set up to what its IP address is going to be. Um, and you can use its fully qualified domain name as well, which is probably actually better than its IP address. Uh, and then here is where it's going to be listening at. You'll notice that it's it's still its IP address, but it's um, a different port. And then here we go. This is the cluster token that we're going to use. And these are the initial cluster members. So this is Etsy 0, Etsy 1, Etsy 2. And this is the fourth one. Again, never create a cluster with four. Um, and we're creating it with a cluster state of new and restart on failure. So this is a really simple fa file. That's all there is to it. You'll want to copy the etcd service to etsy system d system service. All right. So again, with all services, you're going to need to perform a daemon reload. So you want to do sudo system ctl. After you do that, you can do the sudo system ctl enable etcd. So enable is just going to let it start when the if the server reboots. And then we can go ahead and start it. All right. So this failed because the initial members that we started didn't have etcd three. So it didn't have the third node. So they're going to be rejected. All right, let's go ahead and validate what we have done. So you've been standing up some etcd nodes and you want to see that they're actually working. So at this point, it's going to be easiest if you SSH to one of the nodes. Let's do one dot. All right. So once you're on here, you're going to be able to do something like this. This command right here. Now, I want to break this command down just a little bit. You're the very first thing that you're doing here is you're telling it to use the API version three and you're asking for a member list. You're giving it the endpoint you want to hit, which is the local host and the port. The and then you're just passing it the cert information because we already we, we made this a secure one, so you need the cert information. Now, since we're on the node, we know exactly where that cert information is right here on these. So it's really easy, but I just wanted to point that out. If you tried to hit this from off this node, um, one, you'd have to expose this in firewall, and two, you'd have to have this information on whatever node you were calling it from. All right, so if we run this, uh, you'll notice that etcd ctl isn't found. This is because it's not in our path. Um, if you remember at the beginning, we extracted it to user local bin. So we should be able to run this this command again. Uh, let's just clean it up real quick. Uh, all right. OK, so really quickly, we're just going to update this to be. And now that should work. And there you go. You can see that our cluster is up and going and you can see all of the other hosts and stuff. We have an etcd cluster. You can actually use etsy control to actually uh, interact with it if you wanted to. So instead of just listing members, you could set and do things like that. All right. Thank you for joining me with etcd. I hope you saw how simple it was to set up, but also what etcd is looking for. This should help you if you ever troubleshooting etcd to kind of just understand, you know, what's required to set it up and what things it's going to need to, to communicate with the other members in the cluster. So again, thanks for joining me. Uh, if you like this video, please give 
give it a thumbs up. If you dislike to give it a thumbs down um, and uh, subscribe if you're finding this useful. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. If there's other things other than Kubernetes or um, Kubernetes the hard way that you'd like to see covered, please let me know and uh, I'll try to make a video on it. <laughs>